Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we have a really exciting, I guess you call this an unboxing. As some of you know, I have a soft spot for uh, old video game systems, especially the sort of the first generation of home video game systems. And we've got something in those lines today. And I don't know if it works. We're gonna take a look at it. And uh, if it doesn't work, we're gonna fix it. If it does work, maybe we'll play a game of whatever this is. Let's get started. Okay, so I bought this from a uh, woman who was selling it. Her family, I guess, had purchased this originally. And um, like most of the things that I buy in this part of the world, it was manufactured in the Soviet Union. Look at this, guys. Video, video sport. This is beautiful. So it's got its original Soviet packaging on it. 220 volts, 50 hertz, weighs 1.5 kilograms. Um, I'm gonna guess this was probably manufactured in the late 80s or 90s. Here we have some more information here. Uh, color black. <laughs> um, here's the basically the serial number, 017684. Oh, made in 1990. So it looks like September of 1990. Uh, it cost 115 rubles then. So some of the packaging is, some of the packaging I guess is still kind of intact. We're gonna try to preserve that as much as we can. The lady who sold this to me, really nice lady, really wanted to talk about the Soviet Union. Um, I of course, even though I live in the former Soviet Union, I wasn't born there, but I like a lot of Soviet tech. Let's see what we got here. Here we go. Video sport. We have the instruction manual. Beautiful. Some diagrams. I'm already excited about this. Looks like it's got a number of different games of a roughly Pong configuration. So this is 1990. This would be one of the first generations of home video game systems in the Soviet Union. Oh guys, check this out. You know what this is? The cool thing about Soviet electronics, when you get them, when they came from the, if you get them in the original box, is they come with this passport, basically the manual, but then they also come with the schematics. This was like standard, this was standard to include the schematics for the device with the device so that you can fix it yourself when it goes bad. Look at it, all hand-drawn. This is amazing, guys. I think I'm gonna frame this. They even have hand drawings of the different transistors, hand drawings of the, here's some hand drawings of the diodes. Here's the, here's the power supply. This is great. If we need to repair this thing, we don't have to hunt around for the schematics. Really beautiful, I wish. I wish all electronics came with that. And here we go. Okay, we've got a sort of duck hunt kind of style pistol here. It's a little bit of a mess. That tells me that somebody was using it at some point. Okay, so this is the, I guess this is the cable that plugs into the television. Standard so Soviet antenna cable connector. Here's the power supply. Looks like um, 220 volts, nine volts, 50 hertz, um, 100 milliamps. Okay, D215 is the number on that. And it's openable, like unlike so many other power supply, so maybe we'll test this first actually before we plug this whole device in. Though in general, it appears to be in pretty great condition. So here I guess are the game selectors. Okay, here's the channel adjustments. For the, here is the um, sharpness. Here's you choose the game. 
Here's a test button. This thing appears to be in pretty good condition, guys. Again, here we go, 220 volts, 50 hertz, 115 rubles. Actually, like, molded into the plastic. I guess prices didn't change very much. Date of release, September 1990. Fantastic. Made, of course, by Electronica, which was the main electronics brand of the Soviet Union. Here's a um, port for one of the controllers, which will be right here. So it's got the sort of... Okay, this one appears to be maybe coming apart. Yeah, that one's coming apart. So maybe that one actually was broken. Somebody tried to fix it. Here's a second one not coming apart. Motion feels good. Okay, so where do we start? I think the place we start is seeing if this has uh, nine volts coming out of it. And um, if it does, then let's plug it in and give this thing a test. So, meter to DC. Turn the light on, maybe you can see that a little bit better. And what do we have? One of these is going to be ground and one of them is going to be hot. And we have nothing. We have no voltage whatsoever coming out of this power supply. Okay, I fiddled with the plug. Let's try this again. Still nothing. Let's try a different plug. Ah! Okay, it was a plug problem because we have 8.8, .8. we have 8.8 .8 volts coming, 8.86 volts coming out of the power supply. I'm gonna call that good. Let's just test it. Let's just test this thing. And uh, to do that, we're gonna use Old Faithful here, my Electronica 409D that I uh, previously restored. Restored's a strong word for it. I fixed the power button and I retrofitted a better, uh, um, plug receptacle on the back because it was using the, the standard plug receptacle for these which is proprietary and kind of a pain. So I just put this in so it can use something that we all are used to. So let me get this set up so you guys can see it. We don't need the controllers for now. Yes. Okay, guys, so I got, finally got the power situation sorted out. Um, I was using this, this power strip, and it's just incredibly poor design because the sides of the plugs are so high that no plug will fit in here except for those that... I, don't, I just don't understand how they <laughs> designed something like this. So you can see I kind of cut one off, actually. Cut part of it off. That didn't really help very much, so this is worthless. So I found... I have another power source over here. Um, we've got it connected. We've got the video sport connected to the television. We've got the television almost plugged in. Stand by. Television's plugged in. Let's turn the TV on. Turn the volume down, sorry. TV is on. Okay, why? Is there no picture on the TV? There's the picture on the TV. You can see it. Super. Okay, now we're gonna plug in power supply to power supply to the game unit. That's plugged in. Uh, is there a power button? Doesn't appear to be a power button of any sort. So when I adjust the when I change the channel adjustment. I can see it making some changes on the TV, which to me suggests that we're in the right vicinity. Oh, actually, let's turn on, I guess, this test pattern. I don't know, I don't know what that does exactly. It's cycling through all the channels. See, it's almost like there's something. Okay, so I'm gonna need to do some reading in here and see how this thing gets set 
get set up. So I will, um, I'll do that and come back to you once I've got some more info. Okay, so I haven't been able to get a picture yet, but I have gotten to a point where I know that it's trying. They're sending some sort of signal because and it's gonna be hard for you guys to see. But if, you, if I disconnect the, the cable attaching it to the game unit, you can see that it goes back to normal snow. And if I reattach the cable, it looks like it's making, sending some sort of signal. And I can adjust this Podstroika na kanal, and look, it's making these changes right here. Like it looks like, it, it looks like it's really trying. So, um, this could be a couple things. It could be a problem with my television, though I don't think so, because I, I had this hooked up to an a analog video signal not too long ago and it was showing it was fine. Um, or it could be a problem with the actual signal generation. There's something wrong. So why don't we open up the game unit, take a look around. Maybe there's a bad capacitor somewhere. I mean, the thing is um, 31 years old now. And uh, take a look. OK, so got some bubble wrap down. Looks like it's just four screws. Flat head. Where's my favorite screwdriver? Here we go. OK, so this screw is covered with wax, which tells me that no one's been in here before, which is great. No weird bodge wires to try to figure out. No sloppy soldering. So we're just going to scoop out that wax. Looks like this just lifts out. Is that possible? Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, these buttons are holding it on. These knobs, rather. And they don't want to come off. Well, I've managed to mess up the plastic. That's great, Thomas. But honestly, I don't know how I could have avoided that, given that this thing is just not coming up. Okay, so new plan. We're going to make some a soft grip out of these pliers, and hopefully we can avoid more damage. Ha! Okay, that's off. And now the board should come out like so. There it is. Like a lot of Soviet electronics, handmade circuit board, beautiful. We've got some electrolytic caps. We've got, looks like some film capacitors. Here's a trim pot that may be of interest to us. Possibly another one here. And then a lot of proprietary chips. Or I don't know if they're proprietary, actually. And then here we've got this main chip that's socketed. And uh, fingers crossed that the problem isn't here. If something's wrong with this, it's very unlikely that we would be able to replace it. But let's just go through quickly and see if we see anything else. OK, so here we've got our 25 volt, 200 microfarad capacitors. One leg of that, one lead is on the ground plane. And you can see, I believe, this going all the way around on three sides is probably our ground plane. So all the capacitors, like this one here, we know that that's going to be negative. Now, when we get into these capacitors, so this one is a 10 volt, 50 microfarad. Um, this becomes a little more difficult to figure out which is positive and which is negative. It's not silk screened on the front. And 
the back side, let's see if I can find it right here. The back side right here, C24. Also, I mean, I see a plus 9 volts there, but it's not immediately clear to me which is going to be the positive lead and negative. And the last one's over here, 10 volts, 20 microfarad. And so the deal with Soviet electrolytic capacitors, or so I've been told, is that um, some of them, in a certain date range, they were produced in a certain factory in Yerevan, Armenia, are legendary, or should I say notorious, for being uh, very bad capacitors. And a lot of the guys who work on Soviet electronics have a policy of just replace on site. And they have some sort of symbol on them, and I'm sorry to say I don't remember what that symbol is, that tells us um, that they're from that factory. I don't know if these are from this factory. I'm sort of inclined, given, oh, here's another trim, here's another potentiometer that we can mess with. I'm sort of inclined to just replace them anyway, since we're not getting a picture here, um, because why not? Let's remove that from the equation. Generally, really beautiful board. I love these old handmade boards. So much of Soviet electronics has this kind of care in it. You can see like the history of it. You can see someone has crawled in 77 right there. Obviously not the year it was made. I'm not sure what that is. A lot of times on these old Soviet boards, you will see the name, people will sign their names which is really interesting because um, sometimes it's in Russian, sometimes it's from other languages of the Soviet Union. And um, it's really great. So yeah, let's start by replacing these three capacitors if I have them and um, go from there, see if that solves our problem. I actually one time ordered a bunch of capacitors from DigiKey and all of them were on the very low end of the tolerance for that capacitor. And I wrote them a note and said, hey, what's the story? All of these are like just barely within tolerance all in the end. And they asked their, one of their technical chiefs. And that guy came back and said, generally speaking, um, you should always order one level of value greater than what you think you need because of that. And I had never heard this before. I thought that was really interesting. Kind of makes me nervous to do that. The next value up would be 330. Um, yeah, so I, uh, we're going to go ahead and put these in and um, see if that changes anything for us. What do we want to do, actually? We want that. We want this because we, we are now going to try this again. We care about power, we care about signal. Like there's clearly some sort of signal. <gasps> Look at that, guys. We have a test pattern. We have a test pattern. So that means if we have a test pattern, does that mean we have a gain? That looks a lot like a video game. That looks a lot like a video game, guys. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna reassemble all this, get the speaker back on, and see what we can do here. Yes! It's alive. There's checkerboard test signal. 
And here's our grid line test signal. All is well. Okay, here's is Okay. Oh, look at this. Let me bring you guys in closer and we can take a look at it. Okay, so we've got some Pong here. I'm only one person, but I'm going to ask uh, my friend Alina if she'll come over and play, play a game with us. Now I'm serving. Ah! So guys, we have Soviet Pong. My memory of video games in 1990 was pretty different. I spent a lot of time in the arcade as a kid. We've just been a few years behind uh, Atari, a few years behind Breakout. All right, we tried Pong. Let's try the shooting game. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> okay. Guys, look at this. This is so cool. 1990s. Soviet home video game tech. As you can see, I'm winning. OK, so basically, all of these switches and these two buttons um, change the complexity and the configuration of two basic games, Pong and a shooting game. So guys, it's alive. Our home video game system, manufactured in the Soviet Union, 9th, September of 1990, is alive and kicking on the CRT that we have here. I don't know if it was the three capacitors that we changed, or maybe we tried a setting that I hadn't tried before, and it's sort of a happy accident it came up, but we got it running on this machine, and uh, I couldn't be happier. We've got uh, a bunch of variations of Pong, and we've got a shooting game variation, which is pretty amazing that from 1990 I can point a point this gun at the screen and have some sort of interaction with an analog television. I know in 1990 that didn't seem too crazy an idea, but I just think that's super cool. So if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, give us a subscribe, and if you like Soviet tech, keep coming back because we've got a lot of great videos coming, um, and I hope that they're all, the repairs are as successful as this one. Thanks a lot for tuning in. See you soon.